Good morning, everyone. For the first lecture, you are really not going to need to code, but you're welcome to keep them up if you like. This first lecture is going to go relatively quickly compared to other lectures, but that is all right because we're going to jump into a lot of code that we have today. OK, so first, we're going to start with welcoming you to the inaugural Chen Data Science and Artificial Intelligence for Neuroscience Summer School. As you have already learned, there's going to be kind of a wide berth of people with experience. And so the biggest you know, support that you're going to have is the people around you. So really ask them questions, ask us questions, be loud, be vocal, make sure that you're getting the help you need. Otherwise, you're not going to get too much out of this. So before we start, we just want to point out all the people that have really helped put this together. And moreover, all the people that you should be asking questions to should you see them around. So definitely take the opportunity to just, you know, if you see them, ask a question, see what they think, etc. So the people that are organizing this are the wonderful David, Lior, Pietro, and Isong. And we want to thank them all for really giving their expertise in both neuroscience all the way to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Without them, you know, this would not be a course. And so if you see them around, thank them, but also ask them lots of questions. We also want to thank all the external instructors who are going to be coming and giving you different days. So it'll be uh, Eva Dyer from Georgia Tech, Jonathan Cow from UCLA, Ann Kennedy from Northwestern, and Chathan Pandarathan from Georgia Tech. And so they'll all be giving you different days worth of lectures and bringing in a TA and talking about the techniques that they actually work on. So they will also be a wonderful resource for you and make sure that you talk to them a lot and you know ask their TAs questions as well. We also, you met uh, Helen this morning, but we really wanna thank Helen and Mary for helping set it up. And if you see them, definitely thank them profusely because they've done a lot of work to make this possible. All right. Oh, let me I'll let you add Sam. <laughs> All right. Okay. And we also want to thank all the teaching assistants. And these are the people that have built a lot of the CoLab notebooks that you're going to be using. So Schwan, Tara, Chris, Mehdi, and Brandon, they're all coming from these various institutes with their professors. And they're going to be the ones to ask lots of questions about the notebooks as they're the ones that built them. All right. So now we're gonna go into the various daily schedules and what you can expect for the course. So today is a little bit different than what you're gonna see on most days, as well as a special bring your own data day. So for today, we actually have three hands-on sessions. Hands-on sessions are synonymous with the CoLab notebook sessions. So it's going to be a time for you to just look at code that's been pre-made for you, walk through it and make sure you understand what's happening. And as I already said before, the people around you are going to be your biggest support. So definitely utilize all the people in the room. And so today we have uh, three different hands-on sessions, each about two hours, and we're gonna see how much of the code you guys can get through. And we're gonna gauge, you know, kind of how to make the course either more challenging if you guys are superstars, or maybe a little bit easier depending on how it goes today. All right, and obviously today we're here at Caltech in Chen. That is not going to be the case for the rest of the course. For all other days, we're going to be meeting over at the cul-de-sac in Michigan. The bus will leave promptly at 8.45, and if you are not on it at 8.45, we are leaving without you. And the site, the Sealy Mud Estate that we are going to does not support parking, so you will not come if you are not there at 8.45. So definitely be there, and if you can't, you're gonna call us and we'll try to figure it out, but only if you call us before 8.45. So this is important. Make sure that you are on top of things because we will leave without you. All right. The next schedule is a typical day, which starts tomorrow and is actually for the rest of this week and for most of the days next week. So there will be a breakfast followed by an introductory lecture taught by one of our either external speakers or in like local Caltech speakers. There will then be a short break and then there will be a philosophy and general discussion section. This section is meant to be kind of like an ask me anything with the professors that are coming. This section will not be recorded. And some of the professors have voiced, you know, controversial opinions about the techniques that they're going to be teaching you. So this is a time to think about like, oh, like, why do we even do this in the field? You know, ask those types of questions. And it's only gonna be as good as you make it. So the more questions you ask, the better it will be. And, you know, be boisterous, they can handle themselves. All right, that will be followed by lunch and then a me methods lecture, which will be recorded as well. And then a hands-on session, which as you know by now is the CoLab notebook session. 
And for the introductory lecture and methods lecture, those will both be recorded and those will be released once we have a chance to kind of cut slides in and polish them up. So after the course is done, if you're like, oh, I didn't really understand what was going on, you will have a chance to go back and watch the lecture and refresh on those topics. And of course, all the code is going to be open source as well. So you can go back and look at the code and figure out anything that you might have missed or want to review. All right. The last day that we want to walk through is the very special bring your own data day. So this is going to happen on the 12th, which is, I believe, Tuesday of next week. And as you'll notice, there's two hands on sessions and two methods lectures. And so the structure of this day is set up that obviously a lot of you are experimentalists. You probably have data that you're interested in analyzing, but it's either difficult because of data processing. It's difficult because of the methods that you're trying to build on it. This is that day for you to bring in data that is very difficult for you or is just super messy or anything and to have expert help help you actually walk through and either do pre-processing on it or build like introductory methods for it. So the way it works is the first methods lecture, we're going to look over some data processing techniques that kind of transcend time series, images, single cell sequencing, all types of neuroscience data. And we're gonna walk through an example in the lecture. And then in the hands-on session, you're going to be data processing and like processing your own data. So you have to prepare data to bring. If you don't have data, that's fine. We'll have some for you to like practice these techniques on, but really take advantage of it by bringing your own, your own data, your own content. All right, the, in the afternoon, the methods lecture is going to be about how we build exploratory models. So let's say I have data and I don't quite know what to do with it. How would experts like us go about building like a single simple, you know, feed forward neural network? Or how would we go about looking at some different dimensionality reduction techniques? And again, in the hands-on session, you're going to be you know, given the opportunity to work through methods on data that is yours. So really take advantage of that day. It is unprecedented for people to have, we're gonna have like, I think it's four TAs coming from like computing and mathematical sciences, like PhD students there that do this every day. You will not have an opportunity like this again. So prepare some data to bring it with you. All right. Um, Another thing we wanna say is that you guys should ask a lot of questions and feel free to interrupt. This is going to only be as good as you guys make it. So please feel emboldened to you know, ask us anything. And I think with that, I'm gonna see if there are any questions so far, both on Zoom and in, in the room. All right, if not, that's fine. Feel free to speak up later. All right, now I'm gonna pass it over to Adi who will walk you through a few more logistics. Right, so we just wanna introduce you to a couple of the resources that's gonna be key uh, to the whole course. First is our course website. I hope all of you guys have accessed this. There's also a link to this on our Slack. Uh, and if you haven't, you know, like you can look at the QR code or QR code, open it up on your phones. Uh, that contains all the schedules that we just talked about for every single day, as well as links to uh, notebooks, as well as uh, GitHub repositories for every single day as well. So it's a sort of a one-stop shop for all the stuff that we'll be doing in the course. Second thing is our GitHub repo. This contains all the notebooks for each of the days organized uh, pretty uh, very systematically into both the session notebooks as well as solutions and things like that. So definitely go through that uh, as well. All of this will also be in our, in our Slack. So there should be links to that as well if you don't wanna you know, uh, have it open in any other place. Uh, beyond this, uh, you guys have all probably used, uh, at least signed up for Google Colab Pro so far. So if you haven't, again, uh, we can sort of send you instructions on this. Uh, it's, as for some people, it's easy. For some people, it's difficult. Uh, and if you haven't also got your, uh, the Visa prepaid cards yet, uh, please let us know. We can give that to you. Uh, second thing, last thing is uh, the Slack channel. So uh, we've all sent you a, we've sent you all, all a invite to this on your email. If you haven't received it, there's a link to it over here as well, as well as a QR code. So please uh, make sure you're on Slack. And I think most of you guys are probably on there, so that's great. Uh, and the last thing we just want to stress again is sort of this is the bring your own data day. It's again a really unique opportunity uh, to sort of again uh, work with your peers, work with TAs. We have people who do stuff like single cell RNA seq, time series analysis every day. So again, use that data to sort of bring any kind of data set that you have. And if, even if it's not in a portion that is ready to be sort of analyzed, still bring that out and we can teach you how to like pre process that and, and denoise it and, and do things like signal extraction. So I want to emphasize that part once again. So once again, these are all the different people you'll meet uh, in our course. Uh, the external faculty, Eva, Jonathan, Chetan, and Anne, as well as our own Caltech faculty, including Lior. 
We're just going to walk you through uh, very briefly right now the different topics we'll encounter throughout the course. The way we've structured this is that we have topics you'll see many times through the course, and that's again by design so that you get familiarized with many different topics. Uh, but we'll be starting today really simply by looking at computational basics. We'll go through some very essential ideas in machine learning, including things like overfitting, regularization, and we look at all of this through very simple models, things like PCA, linear regression, logistic regression, and so on. So these, this will be what we'll, be, what we'll go through through the three different collab notebooks we have for today. Following that, we have Ann Kennedy uh, with her, um, uh, her teaching assistant, Schwan Ma, who's a postdoc at Lee Miller's, La Lee Miller's lab at Northwestern. Uh, she'll take you through a dy dynamical time series analysis, which is sort of going one step deeper into the topics we've already covered on day one. So she'll talk to you about the math behind regression techniques, introduce generalized linear models, which is another kind of regression technique that's commonly used in neuroscience, uh, as well as other kind of decoding approaches, including filters and so on. Well, she'll then, on her second day, take you through high dimensional data analysis, including, again, going through the math and algorithms behind techniques like PCA, non-negative matrix factorization, and other things. Um, and then we have another special day by, by Sabera, who will take you through autoencoders and machine learning. This will sort of be an, a, a way to bridge the gap between these linear techniques that you've seen in the first three days, as well as sort of the more advanced machine learning techniques that you'll see in the upcoming days. And so she'll really give you an introduction to machine learning, but also act as a bridge between these two different sort of sets of days. In the second week, you'll first encounter single cell RNA sequencing with Lior, as well as Tara, uh, her senior grad student. Uh, and they also take you through, again, sort of go through the math behind linear regression, but also hypothesis testing and other things like postural correlations that are commonly used when you analyze single cell RNA seq data. Uh, and on the 12th, we we'll have Bring Your Own Data Day, which we've again emphasized is, is really special. So bring any kind of data set that you may have. The last three days are where things get really interesting because we're going to go straight into deep learning and go through some really, really cool applications of deep learning in neuroscience. The first day and the introduction to deep learning is going to be handled by Chetan Padarinath, who is a uh, faculty at Georgia Tech. Um, he'll go through a technique that he developed when he was a postdoc at Krishna Shernoy's lab called LFATS, stands for Latent Factor Analysis by Dynamical Systems. And it's a very common sort of tool where you can use like autoencoders and deep learning approaches to denoise and extract interpretable latent factors from your data. Then we have Eva Dyer, also from Georgia Tech, who will go through generative modeling and how to make models we can simulate uh, your data ahead in time, as well as a, a really cool application of that using a tool called Meow. And finally, we have Jonathan Cow, who will take you through recurrent neural networks and walk you through a really seminal paper in neuroscience, uh, which came from Bill Newsom's lab, where you can train a recurrent neural network to do a task and then dissect that network and see how it actually functions. So that's kind of a broad overview of the different topics we'll be covering uh, in, in, our, in our course. Last thing I would emphasize are some important housekeeping uh, notes and measures. When you're inside, always make sure that you're either wearing an N95 or K95 mask. Uh, both here as well as in the Sealy Mud Estate when you're there. Uh, and if any of you guys are TAs, you can also take them off when you're lecturing. Uh, you have to be in the surveillance testing. As, we, as we've talked uh, about this with some of you, we'll try to make sure that there's enough test kits and tubes that you can use for every day. We'll talk to the admin and see what we can do about that. When you're at the Sealy Mud Estate, make sure that you bring a reusable water bottle as well. Uh, and lastly, this is important, uh, the Sealy Mud Estate is the Chen's private estate, and so they've asked us not to take any photos when you're at the estate and post them on social media especially, so do not do that. If Mary catches you taking a photo, she'll probably ask you to delete that, so be very careful about this. And you've already probably signed waivers that sort of, uh, sort of emphasize this point really early on with, with Helen today. All right, so Sabir is gonna take you through a really important concept. Okay, so as we've already seen this morning, many of you are biologists, neuroscientists, geneticists by training. And so what we really want to emphasize as you step into this next two weeks is the engineering mindset. And by what I mean is that in biology, oftentimes you have to really think about what you're doing because reagents cost a lot of money. Animal models cost a lot of money. Like all of the time that it takes up to set up an experiment costs a lot of time and money. It's a little bit different what we're going to do over the next two weeks and how you know coders approach this issue. When you're running any of the stuff that you're running with us, I promise you are not going to burn your computer. You are not going to kill Google. You are not going to you know blow up the building. So if you're questioning like, oh, is this right? Is this you know how I should be doing something? Just run it. Like really, just try it. If you just press like enter into your cells, nothing bad is going to happen other than an error message or it just keeps running. And in either of those cases, you're gonna survive and you can just run it again. So really embody the idea that it's okay if I don't know what I'm doing, just run it, just try it yourself. 
and to just you know keep iterating. You can of course ask your TAs or the people around you questions, but really embody that like, I should look up the documentation myself. I should just try to Google this and figure out what's going on. And in the worst case scenario, if like I think that this is wrong, nothing bad is gonna happen to me if I just run it and see what happens. So just try to move fast, break things, it's all right, and really try to think about that and embody what we're trying to convey with this message. All right. The next thing, and Adi already mentioned this, but throughout the course, you're gonna see many concepts two to three times across multiple days, and you're going to see them at different levels of, of depth. And this is by design, and we want you to really internalize when we're asking you to do a problem, what level of abstraction are we asking you to do it at? And so we're gonna give you two examples just to codify this idea and demonstrate what we're talking about. And so, with a lot of the machine learning and deep learning specifically problems that you're going to see, you might see us ask you questions about either the architecture of a model that you're trying to develop or the mathematical function behind it or the code. And so we want you to be able to understand what's going on at these three different levels. You need to understand how the architecture is set up of a deep learning model. You need to understand how that architecture translates into the actual mathematical function or the loss function that we're having it implement. And then you need to understand how does that loss function get translated into code? How do I run that loss function on like a single data set pair? How do I run it on like a batch of data set you know, examples? How do I run it on an entire data set? So really think about what are the different le levels and layers that we're trying to get you to understand these concepts at. Another example of uh, different layers that we're going to ask you to do, and we're actually going to be implementing some of them today, is this idea of applying a method versus implementing a method versus practicing the math behind the method. And so, for instance, and we'll get into this a little bit more later, today we're going to be walking you through dimensionality reduction with you know, PCA and SVD. PCA is principal components analysis, SVD is singular value decomposition. So today we're going to be applying PCA and we're going to then implement PCA two different ways. But we're not really going to dive into the math behind it. And later on, Anne is going to take you through the math even deeper. And then Lior is going to do it again. So when you see something come up multiple times, that is intentional. And we're asking you and we're challenging you to think about it in a different way and to see how someone else might present the idea, because there's probably an infinite number of ways to understand the concepts that we're demonstrating today and understand like because there are many, we're not gonna show you all of them. And so really ask yourself, what are they trying to get us to understand? And a tip off today on the right side with applying, implementing, and practicing, we're gonna be doing two of those. So as you walk, we're not doing all three. So as you walk through the collab notebooks we have designed today, think about why are we doing it this way? Why are we presenting it to you this way? It is intentional. All right. Um, another thing, and I think this will be perhaps a point of contention and we are going to modulate this as needed, but you are meant to struggle through this because this is the only way you're going to learn and this is what engineers and coders do. So it might be a little bit challenging, but we're asking you to really think about like, okay, I know I can solve this, have faith in yourself and just try it. Just run things, just Google things, it's all right. And so sometimes you're not gonna know what to do. And when you don't know what to do, the recourse that we would like you to follow is to first Google things, look at Stack Overflow. You might not know what that is yet. You will figure it out literally in an hour. And if not Stack Overflow, there are tons of other resources like Geeks for Geeks is a good one. Just look at what Google is going to give you and try to figure out the question yourself. Part of what we would like you to learn is if I don't know what's happening, what are the terms that I should actually be searching to figure out what's going wrong? Because being able to understand how to work with all the resources that are out there is probably one of the most important things you're going to take away from this class. So really embody, try to solve it yourself first. Of course, if that doesn't work, and it very well might not, ask your neighbors and debug problems together. There are people in this class that are very, very experienced, and there are people that are not so much. Use each other and use your peers to help you learn because you're going to get the most out of it when you're working together with them. And of course, sometimes you might not know the answer. Sometimes your peer might not know the answer. And in those cases, we have many TAs that will be walking around across every day. And we want you to ask the TAs for help if neither of you can figure it out. And let's say in the worst case scenario, the TA is very occupied with somebody else that doesn't know what's going on and you haven't been able to reach them for 10 or so minutes and you've been struggling. If that is the case, there are 
solutions in the GitHub repo that you can access and you can see how we go about things and what you know the visualizations we're asking you to produce or the results that we're asking you to produce looks like. So as a last resort, if you've tried yourself, your neighbors and the TAs, feel free to go into the solutions and check those if you're like really, really stuck and you can't get help. And you know, of course, you can check those solutions. If you still don't understand it, call a TA over, but it really should be a last resort because we want you to struggle. And this is also by design, so don't feel bad if you are struggling. All right, so today um, we're gonna cover computational basics, as Adi said before, and we're going to do three different collab sessions, and we're gonna see how easy it is for you guys and how quickly we go through it. So the first session is going to be dimensionality reduction via PCA, which is principal components analysis. The next is going to be overfitting and regularization. And the last is going to be data set engineering. So what we're going to do right now is we're just gonna walk a little bit deeper into these and then we'll break up and we'll go through each of those three collab sessions, collab notebooks and see how you guys do. All right, so with the first one, uh, dimensionality reduction via principal components analysis, the idea that we're gonna be working on is we will give you data that is neural activity by time. So you will have many neurons as time progresses. And what we're going to have you do is in many different ways, take this neural data, transform it into its principal components, which is also known as the you know, dimensions of most variants. And we're going to observe what the neural activity space is. And we're gonna look at different labels of the data. And you're gonna figure out what I mean by that very soon. And we're gonna see how those labels transfer into this principal component space. And we're gonna you know, debug this and explore this concept a little bit further. So in more detail, we're going to learn how to use pre-made principal components analysis, uh, one library. We're then going to implement PCA using our own matrix operations. So you guys are gonna learn a little bit more about eigenvalues and eigenvectors and how you can actually transform data with them. And then we're going to use singular value decomposition, which is called SVD, to build PCA. So you're going to, as I alluded to before, you're going to do this at like many different levels of depth and complexity. So really try to internalize like, OK, they're having us do it with our own matrix operations. How does that relate to when we do it with SVD? How does that relate when we use a library? Think about all of these problems that we present to you in, in those terms. All right, I'm going to pass it back to Adi, who will walk through the other two notebooks at a higher level. All right, so in session two, we'll sort of ask the question, now that we visualize neural data in a, in a low dimensional space, maybe often in two or three dimensions, can we actually predict behavior from this neural activity? So again, we have an example where you have recordings of many neurons, often 100 or so, across many, many different points in time, and we want to predict different kinds of behavior. And in this example, we'll use hypothalamic neural data, and we we'll try to predict the behavior attack uh, of, 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 uh, that a mouse is performing. And we'll do this again in different levels. The first thing that we'll do is we'll, you, you'll use a simple linear model, linear regression, and we'll do this again using a pre-made package in, in Python. So you don't have to do any of the math yourself. We'll then learn, to, uh, learn how to identify overfitting, which is a very important concept. Once we identify that, we'll see how to combat that using techniques like regularization, shuffling, and other kinds of te techniques. And finally, we learn to implement linear regression from scratch. Again, performing the actual matrix operations yourself. And we'll also then learn about techniques that combine the first two ideas, dimensionality reduction along with linear regression, and allow you to find dimensions of variance that are correlated to things like behavior. So that's what we'll go through in session number two. In the final session, we'll also ask, how can we transform our data to make it better to, for, for ML purposes, for use for in ML methods like regression or anything else that we might need? And for example, say you have a data set, you want to predict a behavior like attack. Often the behavior that you want to predict might be really sparse. You might have very few examples of that. And that's an example of something called a class imbalance. And we learn how to handle that using resampling methods. You might have a lot of cases where you have missing data chunks. For example, you could have periods of time where the data, for example, is just missing, like in this portion over here. And we learn about interpolation techniques that can help you at least make a prediction of what's actually happening in that period of time. And lastly, we'll also learn how to denoise data, because sometimes you might just have a lot of noise, a lot of Gaussian noise, and we'll actually implement our own filters that can take away some, some amount of this noise. And so with that, let's start coding. Uh, again, this is a link to the GitHub repo. Um, and if you don't have it, you can also find that on, uh, on, on, your, on the course website on Slack. Uh, 